In the workplace, difficult situations inevitably arise from time to time, which can lead to conflicts between workers. And while it can be uncomfortable, it's important to deal with these issues in the right way. Connecting Points Veronica Garcia spoke with Pedro Sanchez Jr., a leadership speaker, coach, and trainer who offered some tips on how to handle workplace conflict. Well, I was doing some, uh, some research in uh, the Pollock wholebuilding.com gave some, some staggering statistics that stated that 85% of employees in the workplace have conflict. And for me, that was, that was impressive. That was a lot of, that's a high, high number of have, uh, conflict issues in the workplace. And then I started digging a little bit deeper and it said that uh, 49% have conflict with personality clashes or ego. So a lot of, a lot of the conflicts we see personality-wise, family, co-workers, peers, managers, uh, executive leadership has to do with a lot of it personality clashes or ego. Hmm. So it's no way to avoid conflict in workplace. So how we can manage different personalities? I, I, I'm going to grab your word there, manage. I think you're correct. There's no way to avoid conflict. Uh, if we avoid conflict, the reality is that conflict will not avoid us. And then we're going to get the results that we do not desire. So we have to learn how to manage and navigate conflict with people. And, and first of all, you got to learn how to manage yourself. How do you manage? How do you self-regulate? Um, and, and how do you deal with people when you receive something that you don't agree with? What's your body language? How do you react? What's your facial expression? Why? Because that's gonna, the recipient is going to receive that and say, wait a minute, he's putting a wall. Well, he's not willing to listen to what I have to share. Hmm. So how we can confront this kind of situation and very uh, with a co-worker in a workplace, for example? Well, a workplace, you know, I, I deal with this daily uh, with, with a team. I manage a team of 12 now. Um, the best way to confront it is by setting first expectations. What are your expectations? Uh, one of the things I tell my team is never assume something. You have a voice. Uh, with your voice, please utilize it. If you don't like something and something came across the wrong way, let the peer know, hey, what well, you stated uh, didn't come across the proper way. Was this, is, this is, what, is this what you mean by this comment that you stated? So first of all, you got to understand yourself. Secondly, you have to set the proper expectations to the person that you're expecting something from. I feel sometimes we set the expectations high and we'd even tell the person what we expect. Mm -hmm. And then we expect a different result. Mm -hmm. But they don't know what you're expecting. So from my perspective, I always took it, took it from the perspective of I got to teach them, I got to coach them through the process. And this is what I'm, I'm expecting. And do you understand what I'm requesting from you? Mm -hmm. Please repeat it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once they do, then we have a better understanding. Mm -hmm. And how important it is to find out the people surround you need to trust in you as a leader. How we can connect that trust to understand that I'm part of the solution, not a conflict. By, pertain, by sharing that trust, you first got to show that trust by confronting that person, right? So for example, if, if I'm gonna confront uh, or bring to action something that one of my employees did, I will tell them, well, first of all, what you did was incorrect, and this is why. If it was because something I said, I first wanna be the first one to apologize if I didn't communicate effectively. So as a leader, I wanna take the hit first. So if they have a wall up, they could bring it down. And now we, have, we can have a conversation. Usually that's how I start my conversations. If I did anything, I, if, if my explanation was incorrect, I want to apologize. Uh, let's start from there. What did you understand with that? Mm. And then you could start you know, course correcting the problem. And one of the biggest things I've seen in leadership is that we want to confront the problem, right? And not, and not find a solution to it. Mm. Even that word is big. Yeah. A problem, it's a negative thought. Exactly, exactly. So I try to find what's right, not who's right mm -hmm. in the situation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I can say, hey, it was my fault. I apologize for that. 
uh, and the, the person might say, you know what, it was my fault too. I say, okay, so understand we weren't perfect in this situation of communication. That's the biggest conflict issue, communicating. Mm -hmm. Now that we know that, now let's find a solution to the problem. Mm -hmm. Let's find Should the- Give me some, uh, some tips, how I can confront any situation. What, how I can use, uh, start the conversation if I know it's, 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 it's a problem? Oh, well, how? One of the tips uh, I will say is, first, emotional intelligence. Mm. You have to self-regulate yourself first as a leader. Because oh, as a manager, as a foreman, as a friend, right? Was that leadership is influence. It influences leadership. So you, you don't have to have a title to confront. You have to have influence. You have to have respect, right? So first of all, don't, don't, don't enter the, the confrontation or the meeting that you're going to talk about this issue with a perceived idea of what the problem is or should be. If not, you should start the conversation with, okay, there's a, there's a problem here. Do you see it the same way I see it? So never assume. Always ask. Never start with a preconceived idea if not begin with, okay, there's a problem. How can we solve this together? I'm here to help you solve this. If you don't have the training, let me help you get the training. If you don't know how to confront or resolve this issue with your coworker, let me be your coach at this time and help you talk to your peer. If I have to be involved, let me know. So what is the biggest challenge you have to have, you know, to face within your company, for example? Right now, I work, I'm, I'm privileged and honored to work for the number one CAD CAM software company in the world called MasterCAM CNC Software, which we just uh, were promoted the number one workplace um, in Hartford Current. Uh, so we have a great, great culture, great atmosphere. But one of the biggest challenges I've, I've uh, approached is the growth of my department, right? Five years ago, we started with three. Now we have 12 different cultures, personalities, ideas, thought processes. And with that, conflict will occur. Mm -hmm. So that was, that's been my biggest challenge. And I do it daily. I work with it daily, right? So my biggest number one priority is my people, my employees. How could I serve them with a servant leadership passion, right? I've been doing this. I've been uh, working with leadership for 18 years. I, I had the honor to now, you know, manage for five in my corporation where I work at. But my passion is people with nonprofit organizations for the last, last 18 years. And, and working with people, that's what drives me. So I tell, my, I tell my guys, you guys are my number one priority, my employees. How can I serve you to be the best of you? Mm. Any last recommendation you can give us? Last recommendation is, as a leader, as a person of influence, as a manager, foreman, or a peer, you have influence to change, number one. Number two, you have influence to change others with the proper intention. What's your intentions? What's, what's the reason behind your request? Is it to promote? Is it to grow? Or is it really to demote and, 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 and make people just push them to the side? My recommendation is love, love on people. Help people get better. You, you help people get better, and you will get better as well as a person.